Okay, guess what day it is? It's the day we talk about this. We talk about Joe Biden. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What? No way. That That is not. <laughs> Jeez Louise. No. God. Oh, grope and change. I gotcha. Uh, so Nancy Pelosi responded. She was asked a question today about Joe Biden's uh, the accusation by Tara Reid that uh, isn't it? A, isn't it interesting that nobody ever brings up um, Katie Helper's name that she broke this story? I, I find that interesting. Everybody was using her name when they were wagging their finger at her, saying she didn't do good reporting. Well, it turns out she did. Nobody mentions her anymore. So I will. Katie Helper. Uh, and so they're going to ask her about this. Here we go. As a Biden is a concern, how do uh, Democrats square with the idea that, that they're essentially, a, they're, they're standing by Biden, but they're using a comparatively different standard with, uh, with the Kavanaugh? When so the reporter says, you're using an entirely different standard for Biden than you used for Kavanaugh. And watch Nancy Pelosi's uh, response. When you demanded a, uh, a investigation on Justice Kavanaugh. When it- because Nancy Pelosi demanded an investigation on Kavanaugh. You're not doing the same thing here. A similar uh, allegation came out on him. Uh, why well, let, let me just say, I, I, I respect your question, and I don't need a, a, a lecture. Or- she, she doesn't need a lecture. She just needs, uh, you know, her favorite ice cream which is flavored uh, with the tears of the poor. <laughs> she doesn't need a lecture. She doesn't need a le- so this is two times in a row where she's smacking back a reporter and the reporters just take it. She did it to Jake Tapper when she, Jake Tapper said, hey, you screwed up in this stimulus bill. You negotiated horribly. And uh, she goes, calm down. We have a plan. And Jake, guess what Jake Tapper did? He calmed down. Guess what this guess what this uh, reporter did? She said, yeah, I don't need your lecture. I don't know what the reporter's supposed to do in that position. Yell back, I don't know. But that just that's funny. Two times in a row, here's Nancy Pelosi spanking the reporter. I, I don't need I don't I don't I need don't a need. lecture. I don't <laughs> I don't need a lecture and calm down. Where's the ice cream? Here we go. Okay, here we go. Beach. Here's the thing. <laughs> even now, even she is now talking like Joe Biden. <laughs> when, you, when you're defending and, and just for the record, <laughs> just for the record is hashtag me too thing. We haven't really weighed in on it here at this, at this show much at all because I never agreed with it. I always thought that there is nuance and why, how I've, I knew people who were falsely accused of things like that. Um, I, and so I was like, well, how can you just bla- blanketly? So I was always for, Due process and nuance. And, you, you know, I, I'm for what the, actually the Democrats are saying now. So what the Democrats are saying now, I was actually for all along, but they weren't. That's the problem. So that's just what this question is all about. That's what this controversy is all about, is that you, you meaning the Democrats, had totally different standard. When it came to hashtag me too or sexual assault allegations, when it was somebody who was your political opponent. And you said that, you know, you re victimize women when you don't believe them or you put Kavanaugh on the court. How is how is this not re victimizing women if that's your standard? So the whole point is they're breaking their own standard. So let's watch her do it. Let's watch her do it. I have complete respect for the whole Me Too movement. I have four daughters and one son. Uh, okay, so uh, let me back this up. Uh, let, let me just say, uh, I, I respect your question, and I don't need a, a, a lecture or a speech. Here's the thing. <laughs> Did you see this pause she does? Here's the thing. And what's happening there is, uh, c- computer, initiate deflection mode. <laughs> I mean, watch this pause she takes a lecture or a speech. Here's the thing. I have complete- <laughs> that, that's okay, a computer c- click in, click in deflection mode. OK, here we go. I've got daughters. Here we go. Here comes the deflection. Back to the whole Me Too movement. I have four daughters and one son. 
and uh, there's a lot of excitement around the idea that women will be heard and be listened to. There's there's excitement. <laughs> we're excited that women will be heard and listened to. That's not what you were saying before. Also, due process. <laughs> oh, and- Nelly! Now you hear due process. Oh, Nelly. Now we have due process. The fact that Joe Biden is Joe Biden. uh, (laughs) Joe Biden is Joe Biden. Joe Biden is Joe Biden. And he's running for Senate fat. And if you don't like it, go vote for the other Biden. (laughs) Joe Biden is Joe Biden. Bill Cosby is Bill Cosby. Harvey Weinstein is Harvey Weinstein. What does that mean? Joe Biden is Joe Biden. This is just, this is, you know, you want to say Shakespearean, whatever. This is it. There's been statements from his campaign, or not his campaign, but his former employees who ran. So there's been statements, not from Joe Biden, not from his campaign, (laughs) but from some somebody else. So no statement from his campaign. She's not referencing that. She's not referencing Joe Biden. Offices and the rest, that there was never any record of this. There was never any record. And that uh, nobody ever came forward or nobody ever came forward to say something about it apart from the principal involved. Can you pause it? I am. It, it does. It does shock me a little bit that she has to bring up a record, too. It's amazing. I mean, like that she's saying, uh, you know, there's uh, never been, there's never been a record, a record, a record. There's not a record, yeah, I, and that she's that. That's it. Um, she'll go on. There's never been a complaint. Well, what is she talking about exactly? What does the what does the record really have to? What is that about? Steph, this is again just a computer deflection. That's all this is. Let's listen to the rest of what she says. So proud. That happiest day for me this week was to support Joe Biden for president. Now, what does that make victims of sexual assault feel like? So that's the thing that they used to say. Like, I never even understood it until I heard people like her explain it. That when she says the happiest day this week is when I got to endorse Joe Biden, what they would say, Steph, is that that re-victimizes Tara Reid, right? Isn't that what they say? Absolutely. And that's a woman doing it. The first so when female it was, speaker of the house is saying, that's my proudest, proudest yes. moment, the happiest moment this week to support a predator. So vote, you got to vote blue and you got to vote for women. And you see the difference it makes? Absolutely no difference. Do you see the difference it makes? You vote for a woman. We got to have more women in power. Why? So they can fucking slut shame. So they could do the exact same thing. Hey, I'm I, I'm actually with the due process thing. I'm just saying they're going against their every standard that they set. They're going at, and they've just ended the hashtag me too movement. It's over. It's over now. It's over when you have the most powerful woman in the history of our country. Denouncing the hashtag me too ideology, which is what she's doing, because it doesn't serve her politically right now. of the United States. He's a person of great integrity, a great concern for the American people. He authored the Violence Against Women Act uh, when he was the chair of the Judiciary Committee uh, in the 90s. He ha- he also he also helped out with the, the crime bill. He also uh, has a bunch of accusations against him about inappropriate behavior. He's also was on board with the Iraq war. He started this campaign at a uh, with the Comcast executives at a fundraiser. Uh, yeah, maybe he raped somebody. He's a great guy. It's my, it's my guy. I'm the first lady speaker. It's my guy. <laughs> it's my guy. I'm my guy. He's been an advocate for funding it all along since then. And I, uh, uh, I believe that uh, uh, he will be a great president of the United States. Uh, he is the personification of hope and optimism uh, and authenticity uh, for our country, a person of great values. 
That, do you do you need feel like you need your stomach pumped after listening to that? Like every buzzword, oh, he's authentic. Joe Biden, Joe Biden is demented. They took his car keys away a month ago. <laughs> so there's nothing funnier than when someone is is uh, lying and saying at the same time how authentic and sincere they are. <laughs> That's there's nothing funnier than lying. Lying's always funny, and then when you add on top of it that you're extra authentic and sincere. It's funnier. And she straight faces it. So I want to remove all doubt in anyone's mind. I have a great comfort level uh, with the, the situation as I see it, uh, with all the respect in the world for any woman who comes forward, uh, with all the highest regard for Joe. With all the respect for any woman who comes forward. I love Joe Biden. It's the happiest day of my life. <laughs> but I have all respect for you. But man, this Joe Biden guy, I love him. I respect you. Seems a little incongruent. Biden, and that's what I have to say about that. Thank you. Me. Hurry up, run away before they realize everything I just said is bullshit. And that's why we have Trump as president. Because everyone knows she's full of shit. Everyone knew she was full of shit before. Everyone knows she's full of shit now. Even she knows she's full of shit. He knows she's full of shit. I know she's full of shit. Steph knows she's full of shit. Tara Reid knows she's full of shit. Joe Biden knows she's full of shit. Well, he might not know. He might not know where he is right now. Jill Biden knows he's full of shit. Barack Obama knows he's full of shit. Here's what she used to say. Here's what, here's what she used to say. She used to say, far too few people are recognizing Dr. Ford's sheer bravery in sharing her story. That must not be overlooked. Believe survivors. That's not my hashtag. That's hers. That's hers. That's her standard, not my standard. That was her standard when it was politically helpful for her to have that standard. Now she's actually come around to my standard when it's, when it's politically helpful for her to have that. The only thing really consistent about Nancy Pelosi is her net worth. <laughs> and the only thing reliable about Nancy Pelosi is the cost of her donor dinners. I like how she says, this must not be overlooked because it's politically convenient for me to look at it now. But what if it, when it's politically inconvenient, we must overlook it. And by the way, she doesn't need a speech about a lecture. She doesn't need a lecture. About Kavanaugh. We believe all women. You know, sometimes and some women more than others. Uh, it's amazing. I think her favorite ice cream brand is uh, uh, sweet and savory because that's also contradictory. You want to hear what she hears? Here, here's here she is talking about Kavanaugh. Now here's there's a this is a different point of view. So now she says she believes in due process. You heard it, and that Joe Biden is Joe Biden, and it was the happiest day of her life. Here's what she had to say about Kavanaugh. Respecting women, it's, it, we're here to stand in support of Dr. Christine Blasey Ford and to applaud her courage as she prepares to tell her story. Why, why wouldn't you say that about Tara Reid? We stand with her as she prepares to tell her story. Oh, I know. Because you're a political hack and a corporate criminal who actually doesn't have a moral center. You actually spend all day selling out American people. And now you're re-victimizing sexual uh, victims, sexual assault victims, because it was your political buddy who did it. Again, we're joined by distinguished members of Congress whom I have acknowledged in the interest of time. You know how great they are. Uh, they will make their remarks. But these, what's happening here has lifetime impacts. The crimes themselves, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, allegations that have been made are about uh, offenses that have a lifetime impact and a person whose name is putting forth for a lifetime 
service on the Supreme Court. It's just not right. So there are two equities to be weighed. One equity is the integrity of the Supreme Court. The other equity to be weighed is the respect that we have for women when they come forward. Neither of those equities is well served by the process the Republican leadership in the Senate has put forth. It is not in the interest of seeking the truth to promote the integrity or to respect the privacy, as I mentioned. Neither, um, instead of asking questions, the Republican leadership fears the truth. Instead of coming, when they're host having a... Wow. Instead of asking questions, the Democratic leadership fears the truth. Instead of asking questions, she says, I don't need a lecture. Instead of asking questions, she goes, I believe Joe Biden. Joe Biden's Joe Biden. Instead of asking an act of cowardice, an act of cowardice, the Republican, no offense, all male uh, committee has decided that they would have what they called what a hired woman. Is that the expression they use? A hired woman to ask the question. So when it's again, this is them weaponizing their their gender. It's all men are doing. See, that men don't get it. No, it turns out women are exactly the same, given the political situation. You're exactly the same. Exactly the same. Really? They're so afraid of the truth, and they're so afraid of woman, Dr. Christine Blasey Ford, for the truth that she will tell. Tell. Oh, boy. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when first we practice to deceive. And there you are. And there you are. Hashtag me too. Over. Over. This was the zeitgeist of it. This I don't know if that's the... That, no, the zenith. That's the word. The zenith of it. And this would be the beginning of the end of it. What do you uh, what do you have to say about Nancy Pelosi and all? Do you have that? What you're you're a young lady. You uh, what do you have to say? Well, first I want to acknowledge that she was wearing the same outfit, where she is actually saying, "Yes, I support Biden," and uh, a couple years earlier. Oh my God! <laughs> Come to me. There it is. There she is, and here she is. Oh my God! <laughs> it's the same fucking outfit. <laughs> Oh, my God. But just a different point of view. So it's like, what's that saying about you could put lipstick on a pig? <laughs> but it's still. Wow, a... you're right. Same outfit. That is there's that's some kind of poetic irony or something like that. Right. Wow. Well, hey, we need to believe all women unless it's somebody we like. Yes, you know, and and where she was, she kept, you know, leaning on. It's not. It hasn't been reported. We, we don't find any kind right. of kind of report about it. Here, she's not talking about. It. She's talking about uh, the male dominance of culture, and that the committee was made up of men. And here she is, one woman, so excited this week. The best thing this week for her was that she was able to endorse Joe Biden. Now, I really want to know, I really want to know all of these, uh, my friends who were huge supporters of Hillary Clinton, huge supporters, right? Railing against Bernie Sanders, like out of their minds against Bernie Sanders. Where are they now? How can they even begin to say, yeah, Joe Biden gets my vote. Where are they? Like, I don't... Who are these people that can vote for Joe Biden? Who are these grown-ups that can sit here and tell you you got to vote for Joe Biden? I don't know stuff. Oh, well, it's Nancy Pelosi. Hey, this is the part where I tell you where our live shows are, but there aren't any. <laughs> and then I would tell you to go join our premium, but, but nobody has a fucking job. So why don't you just enjoy the video?